The Bernina 790 is one of the most customizable machines on the market. And I'm gonna show you some of the areas that you can customize for the way you sew. I mean, none of us sew the same, but you can do your settings in the setup menu. And anything that's done in here is gonna be saved as you turn the machine off and on. Now, the way you sew and the way I sew, we're gonna to be totally different. So why and how could a sewing machine manufacturer pick one exact way a machine should run? Bernina has gone beyond that. So as you go into the setup menu, which we will in a lot of our videos, plus if you are looking to sign up for one of our Bernina Stitching Cosmos online courses, you will find that we utilize a lot of these features. So if you wanna see them in action, definitely check out the 10 free videos below this YouTube video in the description where you can see what that course is all about. Okay, so as we go in there, you're gonna see that there are six places we can start. Now, every time I touch in a level, you're gonna notice that a new little, let's say, block is gonna show up at the top. So there's gonna be a couple places where we're gonna get in multiple levels and we can actually use those to step back out. So there'll be times where I'll see, you'll see lots of these and you can always go back, back, back or even back to the most original screen. So in each of these sections are different things that you can do. The one with the straight and zigzag have things like a place where you can adjust the global tension for this particular machine. So that means you can tighten the tension. That would be for every single stitch that is in here, not just for one particular stitch. Remember, this is gonna to happen to every part of the machine. So you can go up or down a bit. Now, anything that is turned yellow as a change can also be touched for a quick reset. So I'll often do that before I leave an area. So to show you how to go back, we're gonna just touch that straight and zigzag, and you see we go back one level. Changing the speed of the machine that could actually be dropped down so you wouldn't have it at the top speed. If you ever forget what one of these is, like I kind of can't remember what this is, touch the question mark and then touch the picture. So this is a, re oh yes, this is it. Uh, securing stitches at pattern begin. Activate or deactivate the locking stitches at the beginning of every stitch. So I've had people ask me where they could turn off those stitches. So the securing stitches are sewn when either the thread cutter has been used. So if you would like it not to do those locking stitches, just slide that so the, the red zero shows. Um, I prefer it to lock, but that is the place where you can check or uncheck that box. This one is one I use a lot. I'm always looking for the hand touching a button. So these are some of the buttons over here on the side or on the front of your machine where you can go in and actually customize how they work. The most common one I use is this one over here with the needle up down feature. So when the needle steps, stops down in the fabric, I sometimes like the machine to lift the presser foot up and hover. This one would be a higher hover. But then there's the next project I'm working on and I don't want it to hover. So I'm always coming back in here, turning it off when I want it off and then turning it back on when I want it on. It's just a quick step. Now if I X out of this, it goes right back to the last stitch I was at. Then we have to kind of step ourselves back in, start at the gear function looking here. We went to the straight and zigzag. We were touching our hand with those buttons and then we were in that needle position, up or down feature. So instead of just Xing out and having to go back in it, Remember, you can step back one level by touching one of the blocks at the top. One person called these like little breadcrumbs. So as you work your way into the forest, you know a way to get out of it. Here we can actually change and how high the presser foot actually does lift up. Uh, the cutter, some of you might prefer that it would lock the stitches before uh, it cuts it. So instead of it just cutting it and not locking it, you can choose whether it locks as a cluster or locks as four stitches, three stitches, two stitches, or more in a very short run of stitches. So sometimes that's nice if you're machine quilting, you just want those little tiny stitches, but you don't want it all near each other. So I'm gonna turn that off. That's not usually something that I do a lot of. 
Uh, the reverse button, this is the backstepping type of option. So instead of it just backing up, especially with a decorative stitch, this will back up into the exact holes of this decorative stitch you just stitched. So if that's a preference for you, that makes back back stitching look really correct. It doesn't like overlap stitches. You could actually change that right there. Um, pattern end. What do you want to do when you touch the pattern end button? That's this one right here. Again, a lot of people use this at the end of their decorative stitches. You know me, I love decorative stitches, especially when you're stitching out your stitch book. You can have it lock, cut, and lift the foot up all in one function just by having it finish that pattern and then start into the securing, the cutting, and the lifting of the foot. Very efficient way to end a row of decorative stitches. The securing function, again, how do you want it to secure? Again, as a cluster or a little bit as a row of stitches. So that's just kind of quick highlights. And again, I hope you'll take some time to come in every so often to these areas and see what might actually be more suited for you. Let's talk about the foot control. So your foot control is programmable. Bernina has always had when you rock your heel back on the back of the foot that the needle will turn or change a half a stitch. So if it's the needle's up, it will put the needle in the fabric and vice versa. But look what they've added now. Instead, you could actually choose instead of the needle up down, you could choose it to lock, you could choose it to cut, you could choose it to lift, or, or any combination of those particular items. So instead of just needle up down, you can choose your favorite part of that machine. Okay, let's come back out. I think that actually is everything on that menu. That was just the first one. Can you believe it? So in the embroidery area, you will find we'll have similar things that we can do and adjust. From tension speed, this one is going to look like um, adjusting the centering of the motif. And so that is uh, possibly if it's not totally centered in your hoop, uh, we can actually see what we're looking at here. Oh, it's wanting the embroidery hoop on for that particular feature. This would be one of adjusting how thick your fabric is, especially if you're quilt, uh, stitch, embroidering on something that uh, has batting in it. You might adjust how thick that fabric is so your foot's not dragging along. If you need to move your, I believe this is for moving your needle, um, your hoop around to thread away and uh, and away on and off. Um, the thread ends are pulled to the wrong side of the fabric automatically after the thread cut when embroidery is started. Uh, this is a new feature for Bernina and it is something that you can activate or deactivate depending on how you want it. So once you get into the embroidery, I highly recommend that you kind of work your way through these. Some of you don't want it to cut at the end. That would be something that you can actually turn off. Uh, changing the unit of measuring. So if you would prefer inches versus metric, uh, you can actually change it there. I think that's actually a newer feature. All right, so here, um, this is gonna be more like your welcome screen. Uh, you can actually type in something different if you choose. Um, you can put your name in there, you can change the colors. All right, personalization. Here is something I do use a lot. Okay, so the part with the eye am showing, the little eyeball. All right, so on occasion, if you're sewing along and your machine says you're out of thread, okay, that would be the top thread, this would be the bobbin thread, and you're like, really? It, it, it's threaded, but it's showing you that it's not threaded. The sensor or something is sensing that there is no thread. Instead of having to take it in, you can actually go and turn off that sensor. And that might be something that can just kind of get you through it. Of course, if your thread breaks and the sensor's off, it's not going to stop for you, but it would allow you to keep stitching. Same thing for the bobbin. If you're having any issues with your bobbin sensor saying, Please check your bobbin, your bobbin is low and you just put a full bobbin in, you can come in here, turn it off and that will get you going until you can have your service technician look at it. Now you do notice that when I'm touching things, things are not beeping and this is one thing I do turn off just because, but if you do want to have it beep, you have different options for beeping and different 
sounds depending on what you touch. If you're in the uh, Bernina stitch regulator mode, you can have it um, also uh, beep at you when you're going too fast. So again, I'm a fan of no sound, and then that way you're not hearing me beep while I touch this. <laughs> All right. And then this one would be some of the things we can do with your service um, part of the machine. So in here, Ah, let's make sure we don't change this. This is the um, <laughs> this is the languages, so I'm going to leave that on English for me. Uh, lights, uh, turning the lights on and off. I've actually needed to dim the light slightly for our camera work, and so for me, I've been able to bring that to a halfway point. Uh, sometimes when things are fabrics are shiny, that's too bright. Uh, you can turn the lights on and off, and then this is how bright your screen is. So depending on if you have uh, windows close by, that might be something you might want to dim. Um, I'm not going to touch this, but if you, for any reason the calibration of your screen gets off, meaning you touch here and this function activates, go into here. Well, here, let's just do it. If you do this, what you're doing is you're touching in the center as that little plus moves around your screen and will realign. Again, don't have to go to your service center to get that done. This one also is some of the options for taking and resetting everything back to the factory setting that is a good idea if you're selling the machine or if you just want everything back to normal in here is if you are needing to calibrate your buttonhole foot um, clean out the thread catcher is in here running the updates um, that type of thing so again i'm just going to let you kind of look in there for what you need it for and then the information here this would be like your um, serial number and things so definitely some things to take a look at the settings are wonderful but again we forget sometimes what is in there so i again hope you'll revisit in there often and then you'll know how to customize this machine something that as the more you use this machine the more you understand where those features would be helpful